O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads the way, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter by the sheepfold, we're going to pause it right there, erase that, we're going to start with this. A reading from John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Very truly, I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes in only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The image of shepherd is used throughout Scripture. Abel, son of Adam and Eve, was a keeper of the sheep. Jacob tended his own sheep. Moses tended the sheep of his father-in-law. David was the shepherd of his father's flock. Some shepherds are good. In scripture and some are not. In Ezekiel 34, Israel's kings are referred to as bad shepherds because they endangered and exploited the flock. We can perhaps think of a leader who endangers the people by misleading them and giving them false information and who uses power to exploit the poor for their own purposes. Today's psalmist declares that the Lord is his shepherd 
And in verse 11 of today's gospel, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Even though Jesus says he is the good shepherd, the political religious leaders will pick up some rocks to stone him by the end of this discourse in John's gospel. A similar incident occurred this past Thursday, except the roles were reversed in Michigan. Armed protesters demonstrated against the governor's coronavirus lockdown at the state capitol. They didn't preserve or they didn't perceive that Governor Gretchen Whitmer's stay at home order was issued for their protection. Here in Kentucky, our own governor has faced similar protests because of the stay at home order. Every parent knows what it is like to hear the voice of protest from a child, especially when they have given that child an order that was for their own protection. I posted a meme on Facebook this past week of a little boy about to stick a couple of knives in an electrical outlet. At the top of the meme are the parental words, hey, don't do that. The boy's response is, stop oppressing me, I have rights. Sometimes we don't know what is for our own good. As the good shepherd, Jesus is all about protection and leading the flock. The context of today's gospel reading is found in the ninth chapter, which precedes it. Jesus heals a blind man on the Sabbath. The Pharisees are so blind to the intention of the law that they are more concerned that Jesus has broken a law than the fact that a blind man has received his sight. Jesus then gives a teaching to the Pharisees, followed by the discourse in chapter 10. This is a common sequence found in John's gospel. Miracle, teaching, and then discourse. In the discourse, Jesus implies that his healing of the blind man was an act of care and concern for the man. Jesus is that kind of shepherd. Anyone with an earshot would have been able to understand what Jesus was saying about the relationship of shepherd and sheep. Sheep were kept at the shepherd's home in a sheepfold. A sheepfold was a pen or a small corral. The only way into the pen was through the gate of the pen. A gatekeeper would have guarded the gate and allowed no one in through it except the shepherd. A thief or a bandit would have to climb the fence in order to get in. Sheep rapidly learn the voice of the shepherd. Like an infant rapidly learns the voice of the mother. They've even done studies that show that newborns already know the voice of the mother because she has talked so many times while the infant was in the womb. If the mother is loving and caring, the infant will rapidly respond and trust to the mother's voice. The shepherd has a name for every sheep. The shepherd cares for the whole, lock, whole flock, but also for each individual sheep. The shepherd leads them out to graze in good pastures. A good shepherd leads the sheep by the safest path, not the ones with holes where the sheep might get stuck. I think of our governor, Andy Bashir. I think he is a good shepherd. He has been attempting to lead us in the safest way through the pandemic of the coronavirus. The period of quarantine has been lengthier than some would like, 
But the governor has taken this path in order to avoid as many deaths as possible. He has not abandoned us, but has been with us every single day at five o'clock through televised news conferences. Every day he expresses concern for all of Kentucky and for every individual that has the virus or that has died from the virus. He has been perseverant in trying to get the resources needed for first responders and for the unemployed. From all appearances, he has been a servant shepherd, doing all that he can to protect the lives of all the sheep, whether the sheep recognize that or not. There have been other leaders, some governors and some at the national level, who have appeared to be more interested in the economy or in their own politicizing. They have not been good shepherds. Our bishop, Terry White, has been a good shepherd, working in consultation with the governor, with the National Episcopal Church, with the Bishop of Lexington, the priest of our diocese, and many others to guide us through this perilous time. Yesterday, our canon Jason Lewis sent out a notification that next Wednesday, May the 6th, our Bishop and the Bishop of Lexington will share a joint conference call in order to coordinate efforts and share collective wisdom concerning a phased reopening of churches. The two bishops in consultation with each other and with other leaders of the two dioceses will be working toward the safest and healthiest ways to respond to reopening. That does not mean that we will be back at OMS next week or the week after or the week after that. We do not know when that time will come, but it will. Dealing with a virus is dealing with something that is unseen, which can be difficult. I can't see it. I don't feel sick. Why can't I go on like everything is normal? I can't understand why they want to keep us at home. Now, I can understand that kind of thinking up to a point, but I also want to consider the input of scientists, those who study unseen things more than politicians, who at times seem more motivated by the money they can get for their cronies, especially when it is at the expense of the poor and human life. Just as we cannot see the unseen workings of the coronavirus, we do not always see the tireless effort by many political and religious leaders, good shepherds. That doesn't mean that the care is not there just because we do not see everything that is happening. It is there. Just as Jesus is always there, even when we cannot perceive his presence, even when we cannot share communion together on a weekly basis. Jesus is the true and good shepherd, but he is more. He is also the gate. I am the way, I am the gate. He is also the gatekeeper. He is also the Lamb of God. In verse 6, we read, Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. The Greek word here used for figure of speech is paroimia. Paroimia is a difficult word to translate. 
It can mean something like a proverb, but at the same time, it can mean something like a parable or even a riddle. A poramia, paramoia, paramoi, param, paroimia means something that is open ended. It always means more than what we see at first and often means more than what we can ever know. The point is that Jesus wasn't simply talking about shepherding. Jesus wasn't just simply talking about shepherding practices of his day. He was talking about his relationship with his people. He knows them. They know him. They know his voice when he calls them. And knowing him and knowing God is about relationship with them. We can't ever grasp God or even Jesus intellectually or know everything about them. A young child does not know everything about its mother but it is in relationship with its mother. Its mother knows, or it knows its mother's voice. And when the mother is a good mother, it trusts the mother. Even when it does not know all that the mother knows, neither do the sheep have or understand the mind of the shepherd. Yet the sheep trust and follow the Good Shepherd. May it be so for us. Amen. The prayers of the people gathered in the care of the Good Shepherd and guardian of our souls. Let us in trust pray for the church and the world, saying, Lord, have mercy. For all who serve the Holy Church of God, who serve tables and who preach and pray, who shepherd the lost and care for those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are persecuted for the gospel, for all who have been martyred for their witness to the truth, for all in lonely places who rejoice in the hope of the resurrection, and for the blessed community of the saints, living and dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all in the world who are sick and dying, especially for the sick, those who are sick and dying from the coronavirus, for the hungry, the destitute, and the mentally ill and the deformed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For victims of rage and sudden violence, especially for abused children and spouses, for political prisoners, victims of, ex of extortion, of murder, and of natural catastrophe, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all gathered in their homes, from our community and our church for our specific needs, that we may come to receive abundant life at God's hand and at the last to rest in Christ's shepherding love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O loving God, we commend to your mercy all who have died and pray that we and all your saints may share life in your eternal dominion. Enable us to know that by Christ's wounds we have been healed and that by the power of his risen and life-giving spirit we are empowered to serve you all our days. We pray through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, 
working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.